Hi guys, Richard Blaine here. Thanks for stopping by my easy cooking blog again. I just got home about 10 minutes ago and I am dead beat. Okay, I've been working all day. It's been a 10 hour day dealing with customers and lots of questions and on my feet and I barely got to eat lunch and now I'm home and it's, uh, well it's about eight o'clock and I'm hungry. I'm really hungry. And I didn't prepare any dinner because I was at work. How many of you work eight, 10 hour days and come home and ask yourself, oh man, what do I want for dinner? I'm hungry. And to tell you the truth, right now, I'm hungry. So I come home and I'm looking around and I go, uh, what would I like to eat? I don't feel like cooking a steak. I don't want to make pasta. And I thought I want a fun food. Uh, I think I'd like some pizza. Yeah, pizza, I want pizza. So I think I'm gonna make a pizza. Uh, what do I want to do? Do I want to call the big chain guys down the road and order a pie, you know, five bucks for six pizzas or something like that? No, I don't think so because to tell you the truth, I think the big chain guys, I think their pizzas suck. And do I want to call the guy down the road that makes a hand-tossed, handmade, custom pizza to order delivered for about the price of my paycheck? I don't think I want to do that either right now because we're in a tough economy. So what I did do was I stopped at a little specialty store not far from work and I picked up a pre-made pizza dough with garlic and herb in it. And it's good. There's no artificial anything in it. It's all natural. And I know to many of you that seems like, well, that's not gourmet pizza. That's not homemade pizza. But to tell you the truth, it is. Because it's a time saver. I paid under $2 for that dough. And the ingredients that I'm going to put on it are all hand-picked by me, fresh, and better than any chain store pizza that you can buy. So... If you like to come home and have pizza sometimes the way I do, to have a pizza and a beer, or pizza and two beers, or 25 beers and a pizza, that's the way I'm doing it tonight, believe that, okay? Then you can make pizza at home and it's easier than you think. So stay tuned because I'm going to show you how to make an easy gourmet pizza with all fresh ingredients. It's easier than you think. And as usual, we've got 15 here on YouTube, so let's get it on. And I'll see you on the other side. Okay, so let's get going. First order of business. This is a 16 inch pizza pan. I don't have a pizza stone. I'm going to get one, but at the moment, I don't have one. First order, you need to lubricate the pizza pan. Whether you have a 12 inch, a 16 inch, or big old jumbo, the first thing you need to do is just give it a little lubrication. That way the pizza dough doesn't stick. You could use cornmeal, okay, if you had a pizza stone, you would use cornmeal. But with these nice new aluminum pans, you just give it a little oil. That's the first order of business. Oil up the pan. Okay, next order of business, you take your dough. Now you could roll it out, you know, you could roll it out. But the best part about the dough, once it's made, is just stretch it out by hand. Just stretch it out by hand. Squeeze. Squeeze. That's all. It'll get there. Use a slight rolling motion, flatten out the dough. You could use a rolling pin on here, but because this is a pan, it's not going to work. Now what I do as I squeeze the dough from the center out to the sides, I'll use my palm heel. I will use my palm heel. Okay. It might turn out to be a perfect circle. It might not. You gotta remember. There we go. You gotta remember, when it comes to cooking, when it comes to cooking, there is perfection in imperfection. Not everything is perfect, and not everything is always going to be perfect. There we go. So we're getting it out to the ends. Okay. Now what I like is to get it to go over the top a bit, because that's going to be my crust. So what I'm basically trying to do, because the pizza tin is upswept a little bit. There we go. So I want this to be like 
a bowl of dough. Okay, get your fingers in the sides. Get that puppy squoze in there. See, see how it's doing it? There we go. Means dough is bunched up from the center. You want to flatten it out. Bring it to the sides. All right. Now being I'm from New York City, we got the best pizza in the world. I've seen this done, you know, five million times. All right, see? See how I'm making it bowl? All right. There we go. There we go. One 16 inch pie. Didn't have to roll it out, I banged it out. You can bang it out. There we go. Okay, now, I knew I was gonna do this for you guys. So last night, I made a homemade pizza sauce and I'm gonna use it right now and the uh, recipe for it will be included here. It's a nice, thick sauce. When I make my sauces, I like to reduce them, to make them thick. I don't like watery sauces. Especially on a pizza, I do not like watery sauce. Here we go. You don't have to cover the entire planet of your pizza here. Just enough. If you notice, it's not just a sauce, there's chunks, because they use crushed tomatoes. I think it adds a lot of flavor. More flavor than just a regular canned sauce. I really don't like using a canned sauce. All right, here we go. Leave about a half an inch, because that's gonna be your crust. Here we go. Okay. Like I said, you don't have to cover it in red, okay? Now, done to that. Some regular mozzarella cheese, okay? You can use as much as you want. Um, when I make a homemade pie, I don't like burying it in the flavor of cheese, but I do like to have a nice layer of it. I do like to have a nice layer of it. All the way around. Try to keep that half inch mark. Because you want a nice crust. In the meantime, I'm heating up an oven. 400 degrees. If I think it has to go higher, I'll do more. At this point, no. Here we go. Now, baby spinach. When it comes to doing a pie, you know, everybody likes to do pile high, and that's okay. You know, that's what I call a spoiler, a big pile high. But you don't want to pile it high. You don't want the thing to be two or three inches up in the air, but you want to taste your stuff. Now, even though I only have maybe, you know, half a cup of spinach here, I'm not going to use it all. The spinach will reduce with the heat. But even though, I, like I said, even though I do have that half a cup, I don't want to use it all. I'll have some left over. Maybe have a nice spinach salad. Now press that down. Another leaf or two right here. Nice layer of greens. Okay. One of my favorites, fresh basil leaves. Fresh. You could use dry. There's nothing wrong with dry. Okay. Just sprinkle it loosely about. Once again, I have about a half a cup here in the bowl that I'm serving it out of, but you don't need to use the whole half a cup. As a matter of fact, what you have left over, you could make a nice, nice salad with the spinach to be served with this. There you go. Okay, criminy mushrooms or brown mushrooms. I think they have a lot better taste than just a plain, you know, white button, but there's nothing wrong with a button. 
I got about four ounces of this too. Sliced thin, you know. You notice I pressed this all down. And that's because the heat from the oven is going to make the pizza, uh, the greens reduce. Okay. It's going to make the greens reduce. And that's fine with me. It's supposed to. So you get those mushies in there. This is going to be delish. Better than any store bought pie or any chain store pie. Healthier. Much healthier. You know what? I'm going to use the whole thing. Because I like Okay. Mushies. Purple onion. Love purple onion. And I cut them into rings. You know, I could have cut them into slivers, but, uh, you know, I like using the rings. Because when you finally cut through this puppy, it's going to be good. So, thinly sliced. Get that going. That going. Here's the kicker, or one of them, scrambled eggs. I know a lot of you are saying, what? Scrambled eggs? But in Sicily, <laughs> they make a pie. They make a pie with sliced hard-boiled egg and thinly sliced eggplant. Okay. Believe me, try this recipe. This is soft to medium soft scrambled eggs. Okay. Soft to medium soft scramble. Two. You'll see. I'm telling you. I'll make you a convert. Artichoke hearts. Mmm. How many of you like artichoke hearts? Mmm. Mmm. It's going to be good. Marinated artichoke hearts. Gorgonzola. Woohoo! Gorgonzola. About four ounces of gorgonzola. Just sprinkled throughout to offset the taste of the mozzarella and your goodies. Gorgonzola has a nice creamy texture, nice pungent odor, nice thick taste. Get it in there. Just about four ounces. Uh, you can put more if you want. You can put more if you want. Get it in there. That's why I like putting the onion rings in there and stuff. Because it gets into the onion ring and doesn't come out. Nice pungent gorgonzola. after. Now, this is going to go into preheated oven 400 degrees, ooh, uh, about 30 minutes. And then it's going to be nice and tasty, and we'll get it on and have some pie in just a little bit. I'll see you on the other side. Hold on tight. There you have it, guys. The finished product. 30 minutes in a 450 degree oven. I know I said 400 degrees, but it's been a long day. I'm tired. But uh, 30 minutes in a 450 degree oven and you have a wonderful golden brown homemade gourmet pizza okay garlic and herb dough mozzarella cheese artichoke hearts purple onions tomato sauce spinach basil gorgonzola cheese a wonderful combination scrambled eggs try this recipe I'm sure you'll like it and I'll see you on the next video. Thanks for stopping by and watching. Take care.